Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started. Guess I'll just get started. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you could please take your seats. We're about ready to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, there's uh, plenty of seats over here, but let's have a seat so we can get started. Thank you, Suzanne. What? Am I not speaking into it? Yes, I, I have to get really close. We need to do more karaoke and sing. I don't sing. Hey, everyone, there's some more seats right up in the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one wants to sit in there. All right, well, good afternoon. My name is Stephanie Shimazu. I'm the director of the Bureau of Gambling Control. Thanks, everyone, for coming today. Um, we're going to get started. I have some kind of prepared remarks. We, as you know, we've been doing some workshops around the state, so we're trying to make sure everyone has the same information. So on behalf of the Department of Justice, oh, right on cue, Division of Law Enforcement and Bureau of Gambling Control, I'd like to welcome you all to this regulation workshop to discuss the issue of rotation of the player dealer position. So this is the third of seven workshops that we will be holding in various cities throughout the state. We chose a location to try and make it convenient and accessible for those who want to participate and provide input on this issue. So the Bureau looks forward to hearing everyone's thoughts today. I understand that individuals may feel strongly about this issue, but please know that today's workshop will be conducted in a civil and collegial manner. I believe that while we can have opposing views and opinions from one another, it is possible to have civil, constructive, and professional discussions. I ask that we keep this in mind throughout these discussions. We cannot tolerate discussions or behavior that are discourteous or disrespectful to others. Additionally, with so many people thank you, interested in participating in this process and wishing to present input on the issue, it will be important for everyone to keep their comments brief, and we're going to limit the comments to three minutes each. We will wait until you have completed your presentation before asking for any clarification or questions so that we do not cut into your allotted time. If you have already submitted your comments to the Bureau and have new input today, you may wish to concentrate on that new input. So if you have brought your comments in a letter to present to the Bureau today, please note the copies will be posted to the um, Bureau's regulations website. As will any other written comments already submitted or that will be submitted during the process. One note too, we are also um, recording this. So we've been placing those um, recordings of the workshops on our website as well. So with the volume of other comments likely to be received, it's simply not economically feasible or envir environmentally friendly for these comments to be distributed in hard copy form. So the regulatory process can be lengthy. However, this is uh, in part to ensure that all stakeholders have an opportunity to voice their concerns and opinions. The Bureau is committed to ensuring the regulatory process is followed and ensuring that all stakeholders are heard. As a reminder, this is just a workshop and we are in the informal stages of the regulatory process and we will continue with the informal process until such time that we're comfortable that we have received, reviewed, and analyzed all your input and concerns. So we also strongly encourage you to provide any suggested language for the proposed regulations during this informal process. The ultimate goal of these workshops is to develop a regulation change which provides clarity to the existing statutory provisions for licensees and direction on how to incorporate this in game rules with the statutory framework in mind. And with that, I will turn things over to the moderator today. Good afternoon, my name is Suzanne George and I'm the Regulations Coordinator for the Bureau of Gambling Control. In, a, in addition to Director Shimazu, joining me today are Assistant Director Nate Diwali and Assistant Director Yolanda Morrow. It is approximately uh, 1.20 on Tuesday, December the 11th, and the Bureau of Gambling Control has scheduled the, this regulations workshop at the Contra Costa Event Plaza, or park, I should say. This workshop is scheduled to discuss the issue of the rotation of the player-dealer position. Notice of this workshop has previously been published to the Bureau's webpage and sent by email and mail to interested parties. 
and a few housekeeping items. Um, so uh, just to let you know, just a location of the restrooms directly out this first exit where you signed in. Uh, ladies and I are on the, my left and the gentleman is on the right-hand side. There are many seats available, folks, over here. Um, please feel free to take one of those seats. All right. So we have changed the format of today's workshop from the previous two. The first portion of this workshop is devoted to the receipt of legal analysis, proposed text suggestions, and discussion about what the actual content of a regulation concerning the rotation of the player-dealer position should include. After this portion, the Bureau will next call those speakers who wish to present comments concerning the impact of any proposed text suggestions. If you had not had an opportunity to do so prior to the start of this workshop, please, at your earliest convenience, sign the sign-in sheets at, that are at the table. While no one will be excluded from participation in these proceedings for failure to identify oneself on the sign-in sheet, the sign-in sheets will be used to call persons in the order of sign-in who wish to present, uh, first off, legal opinions or analysis, proposed text suggestions, and comments about the actual comment, content excuse me, of the regulation concerning the player, rotation of the player dealer position. Secondly, if you, um, ha if you could please, if you're interested in being on the Bureau's rulemaking list, and, but do not wish to present comments, there is also an additional sign-in sheet at the sign-in table. The purpose of the rulemaking distribution list is to make sure that the Bureau um, has names of persons who wish to be notified of future rulemaking activities as well as notice of other regulation workshops concerning this topic. This entire workshop discussion will be recorded. In the interest of time, the Bureau will limit speakers to three minutes and comments must be limited to the issue of rotation of the player dealer position as noticed for this workshop. Other issues or other regulations will not be covered topics in this workshop. When your name is called to present your comments, please we ask that you approach this microphone right here in the front, state your name, and identify the organization you represent. Also, if you have uh, written comments that you'd like to present, you can bring them to me or you can see me after the meeting. So sorry. Today's workshop is scheduled for a total of three hours and may include a short break. The next scheduled workshop is Monday, January the 14th, 2019 at 9 a.m. at the California State University, San Marcos. Now for an introduction of today's topic. In 1984, the California Constitution was amended with the Voter Initiative Proposition 37 at the November 6, 1984 general election. Proposition 37, also known as the California State Lottery Act of 1984, added provisions of government code and amended the California Constitution, authorizing the establishment of a statewide lottery in California. Proposition 37 also added a prohibition in California of gambling casinos the type that exist in Nevada and New Jersey. Specific to this prohibition, Proposition 37 added Section 19E, which reads, the legislature has no power to authorize and shall prohibit casinos of the type currently operating in Nevada and New Jersey. Until this proposition was enacted, casino gambling was prohibited within California by statute, not by the Constitution. Chapter 10 of the Penal Code contains code sections specific to gambling, sections 330 through 337Z. Penal Code Section 330, first enacted in 1872, prohibited six specifically named games or any banking game played with cards, dice, or any other device for money, checks, credit, or any other representative of value. This section was amended four times since 1872, extending the list of specifically named games and changing the penalty and sentencing structure. In 2000, Section 330.11 was added to the Penal Code. In 2001, Section 330.11 was amended by Assembly Bill 854. 
Currently, Penal Code Section 330.11 provides banking game or banked game does not include a controlled game if published rules of the game feature a player dealer position and provide that this position must be continuously and systematically rotated amongst each of the participants during the play of the game. Ensure that the player dealer is able to win or lose only a fixed and limited wager during the play of the game and preclude the house, another entity, a player, or any observer from maintaining or operating as a bank during the course of the game. For purposes of this section, it is not the intent of the legislature to mandate acceptance of the deal by every player if the division finds that the rules of the game render the maintenance of or operation of a bank impossible by other means. The house shall not occupy the player dealer position. There is not, however, any text within the California Constitution or the statute of Calif Statutes of California that define what constitutes continuously and systematic rotation of the player dealer position. The uh, California Gambling Control Act contained in Business and Professions Code Section 19826, Subdivision G, assigns the Department of Justice, Bureau of Gambling Control, the responsibility of approving the play of any controlled game in gambling establishments within California, including placing restrictions and limitations on how a controlled game may be played. The Act also mandates the adoption of regulations which provide for the approval of game rules by the Bureau to ensure fairness to the public and compliance with state laws. The topic of, of rotation of the player dealer position is now open for public discussion, and the first speaker who will be called to discuss a legal opinion uh, proposed text suggestion is Mr. Alan Titus. Good afternoon. Is this is this working? Okay. Well, I want to thank you for scheduling this workshop here and for all of them around the state. I want to thank the director and assistant directors for for coming today. And I want to apologize. I'm getting over a cold. So I'm going to make my, my comments very brief. I really just want to make one observation, and it's a historical observation, and it's to clarify uh, what I think has been some misconceptions. And that, that has to do with that the rotation of the deal, player dealer position has not changed at all over the years. Now, I have represented Artichoke Joe's since early 1989. So almost 30 years, and I came in just as the Sullivan versus Fox decision was wrapping up. The decision, the appellate decision had been released a few months earlier. And I was involved in some of that, and I can tell you that at the time, very few players would accept the player dealer position. It would rotate around the table, and few would accept it. That is the same exact situation today. That situation back then was looked at by the district attorney, was looked at by police, was looked at by everyone. Nothing has changed. And so I just want to make that clear, that we are not looking at a situation where the rotation has changed and the practices of the rotation have changed. They have not changed at all. And that's it. That's my comment. Okay, understanding that there has been a switch in how we have um, done previous uh, comments at workshops, is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to present comments uh, concerning a legal analysis or opinion or proposed text suggestions of what should be included in a regulation concerning the rotation of the player dealer position? All right, moving on to uh, those comments concerning impact. First speaker is Paul Kelly.
Thank you for having me today. Uh, I was asked to share kind of my experience with uh, Park West Casino Cordova. My name is Paul Kelly. I uh, am the chef de cuisine at Park West Casino Cordova. So I have uh, maybe uh, a different um, view uh, towards this issue. Um, you know, in 2014, when I came to California, I came here, I was homeless. I didn't have a house. I didn't have a car. Um, my children were staying with uh, my grand their grandparents uh, with my wife. Um, I had a series of failed investments and, um, you know, I, I traveled about, my, my, you know, I traveled about 3,000 miles to get to California and um, kind of figure out what I was going to do um, the whole way here. And, uh, you know, I got here and I was at a loss, and uh, a few months after being here, I got lucky. I got a call back from an ad um, with, uh, for Chef de Cuisine at Park West Casino Cordova. I've been there since June 20th of uh, 2014. Um, at this point in my life, I'm now more financially stable than I have ever been at any other moment in my life. Uh, my children and my wife, they enjoy a quality of life that I never imagined that I, we would be able to provide for them. Um, I am a contributor to the greater Sacramento metropolitan community, um, you know, helping turn the wheels of the economic machine that's happening up there right now. Uh, without Park West Casino Cordova, card rooms in general, and the way that they are able to conduct business, uh, this would not be possible. Um, again, my name is Paul Kelly, I'm 35 years old. I'm originally from uh, just outside of Flint, Michigan. Um, I studied political science at Hope College in Holland, Michigan. After completing my time there, I got my culinary certificate at the Great Lakes Culinary Academy in Traverse City, Michigan. Um, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I've owned a couple of my own businesses. The first was a uh, small coffee shop at the age of 18. Um, it was a small operation. We specialized coffee, chocolates, pastries. Um, my first professional experience was a pastry chef at the Hotel Iroquois, um, also in Michigan. Um, it's a top 10 hotel in the Midwest. Um, I've spent four years as a sous chef at Rancho de los Caballeros in uh, Wickenburg, Arizona. Day-to-day -day operations, multi-outlet resort and golf club. It's a top 100 course nationally, number five overall in the Golf Digest uh, in Arizona. Uh, where I'm going with this, um, I'm sorry, one more. Um, I, you know, entrepreneur spirit biting at my hip. Uh, I opened up my own restaurant, um, again, going back to Michigan, uh, a casual restaurant upscale. Um, Mr. Kelly, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, thank you. What I would like to say is I've gone from being a burden on the state of California to being a provider to the state of California. I provide for my family, I provide, uh, I, I pay valuable tax dollars, I'm able to pay for my children's health insurance, I'm able to pay for the food that's on the table. And just one last remark please, uh, if I may. Um, in my opinion, the best people to make decisions for card room business models, specifically the bank rotation, are the individual club owners and managers. This goes with basic in my, my opinion, basic capitalism ideology of maintaining competitive markets and creating pricing structures that fit business needs and able to remain relevant and profitable. I would like to say thank you, John and Mike and uh, Sean Yapel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ryan Kopke. Hello, hello. Checking. I just want to thank you guys and everybody else for coming out here to listen to all the voices and everything that we have to say. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is Ryan Kopke. I represent Park West Lotus Casino. I started when I was around 21. And here, coming up 29, 30 years old, pretty much I honed in all my skills. Everything is tailored pretty much to the casino industry. Um, it's a privilege to actually work for a casino that provides great customer service as well as giving back to the community. Um, I not only support myself, but I'm a single father to two kids and successfully raising them throughout the years. And I was able to not only hone in my skills with customer service with the casino, but as well bring it home and provide my kids with food and proper schooling and able to raise them in the correct format. Um, 
that's pretty much it. Um, other than that, I want to thank John Park, everybody else supporting me and allowing me to grow as a person and an individual. Chris Clark. Good afternoon, everybody in attendance. Commissioners, thank you. Um, I stand before you today as a 17-year uh, veteran of the casino industry. I'm currently employed by one of the many uh, California card rooms that are on the verge of being affected by the adjusted changes that are proposed today. Uh, the proposed changes will not only have a potential devastating impact on California card room owners, but also the cities and, uh, that the card rooms pay taxes to, as well as the clubs that they donate to. Uh, I speak as one of the thousand employees employed by the card rooms that could be affected by the proposed changes that are made. The effects of cutting operational time every hour can mean, uh, it can mean hours cut at work or even uh, potential layoffs. For families that are dependent on income uh, of card room employees, these changes could be disastrous. Uh, as an employee, uh, they could be affected. I ask that you strongly reconsider making any changes to the current policies. Thank you. Deshaun Brown. Hello. Uh, my name is Deshaun Brown. I basically grew up in a card room. I'm 30 years old now. I've been in the industry for 10 years. Uh, I started as a third party banker for five years. Uh, crossed over to be a chip runner. Uh, I dealt for three years and now I'm a floor service representative. Um, we're not just a card room. Like we represent the community at Blodi. We don't just have people that work in the card room. We have cook, cush, uh, cooks, dishwashers, service. We're Blodi and we do our best as a community to let people know that we are there for them. So anything that would affect people losing jobs at our card room would affect the city of Lodi. Um, we do a, and I basically just like to thank basically John Park for having us and Brian and Sean for giving me this opportunity to come here and let you know that this would affect us greatly and uh, everyone around me. And if you can look around in the room and see how many other people's lives that could be affected by any type of changes. We're all here because we would have something to say. And this is very important to us. So we hope it's very important that you will listen to us. Thank you. Frank Louie. Good afternoon, uh, Director Shimazu and um, panel members. My name is Frank Louie, and I am the ED of the Stockton Boulevard Partnership. So the Stockton Boulevard Partnership, we are a business property improvement district, and what we do as property owners along our assessment corridor is we try to improve the economic viability of Stockton Boulevard. Uh, Stockton Boulevard years ago used to be the old Highway 99, and so, you know, the area, the, the commercial corridor has been very dated over the years, and now we're getting a rebirth of Stockton Boulevard. And part of the, the rebirth happens to fall under, you know, on Stockton Boulevard, we have the economic engine and Park West Casino. And Park West Casino has been a very good community partner in that when uh, uh, we had uh, crime prostitution on the corridor, we reached out to the Park West, uh, Mr. Park in particular, and brought him in the fold with law enforcement and the ask from law enforcement is the fact that staffing has been uh, really impacted throughout the city and uh, we had asked uh, Mr. Park, uh, the, the, the city had asked Mr. Park if there was an opportunity to help uh, pay for some funding for some pods and the pods are the police operated observation devices that they uh, situated on major corridors to track uh, not only vehicles, but license plates readers, and it's a 
really a, a, a crime deterrent on our corridor. And uh, so Lotus, uh, uh, Mr. Park stepped up and just really was uh, instrumental in securing the funding for those pods. Um, another thing that uh, the Park West, uh, under Mr. Park's toolage, was the fact that we had uh, business property owners surrounding uh, uh, the corridor that had, you know, security issues. And so one of the things that uh, uh, Mr. Park did was provide funding for uh, cameras uh, along uh, the businesses to help uh, with that. So I know my time is limited. Um, we talk about catalyst uh, economic development on the corridor. So with, um, obviously, uh, Park West, we were able to encourage other economic development on Stockton Boulevard that's been dormant for a number of years. We have a Starbucks. Uh, most folks take Starbucks for granted, but to have them on Stockton Boulevard along with uh, other ancillary development, it's a major win for us on Stockton Boulevard. Uh, in closing, the, the fact that, you know, uh, Lotus Park West does have a huge employment on Stockton Boulevard. They, uh, with, with Stockton Boulevard, we have a median income of less than 25000 per household. So we, we talk about lifting the tide for the community, and obviously, you know, this, this is in a step in the right direction. So any... Um, I'm here because any detrimental change to the games permitted at the Park West Casino could have a significant impact and ultimately jobs in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Sestron. Is this too loud? Can everybody in the back hear me over there? Can you guys hear me over there? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Chris Seastrom, S-E-A-S-T-R-O-M, just so we get that right for next time. Um, I actually have Thank had you. the uh, fortunate benefit and the unfortunate benefit of working for more than one casino. I worked in the Sacramento area for a while, for about five years, and then in uh, 2013, I believe, Valentine's Day, in fact, I got a job out here at the California Grand Casino in Pacheco. And... Um, the unfortunate benefit that I talk about was Casino Royale that I worked out in Sacramento was actually closed due to violations of these types of regulations. And so I had to sort of scramble to find a new home, if you, if you will. And uh, this place has been incredible. And we are incredibly cutthroat about making sure we maintain regulations, making sure we don't break the law. And there's a lot of people that work for this place. I mean, we're talking 200 plus employees, I think we got a lot. I mean, look at how many people we brought with us today. I don't know how many every other place brought, but look at how many people we brought. To grand, raise your hands, man. So this is incredibly important. I have a fiance, I support myself, I support my niece. My brother's out at war right now. He's been in Afghanistan for two tours. Uh, if I lose this job, I mean, I don't know what else I'm gonna do. I talk too much and this is a perfect home for me. I, mean, I, I say. <laughs> I, I don't know where else I would go. I don't know what else I would do. So um, I just would like some incredibly careful consideration placed into whatever you wonderful people decide to roll out and really, really, really pay attention to the fact that you're going to be affecting a lot of lives. And when I say a lot of lives, I think that you may not be, you may not fully be aware of the scale in which you will be affecting personal lives if you don't pay very close attention to this. Thank you. Dennis Hone. I hadn't planned on speaking today, but thank you everyone for attending and thank you commissioners for coming out. Uh, about the only thing I would like to say is 
these jobs that uh, people take throughout the cardroom industries in California help many, many people, many people with uh, English speaking uh, uh, skills is their second language. It's helped me. I started off as a dealer, dealer uh, trainer, floor person, tournament director, operations manager. I have worked my way up in the past 30 years uh, through at Oaks Card Club. So they help many, many people. My son and my wife also work there and have started off pretty much at the bottom and worked their way up as many people in the industry do. So changing the regulations greatly affects a vast variety of people. And that's about it. Thank All right, you. thank you. Frank Myers. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Frank Myers. I work for the California Grand Casino. I just moved here in April from uh, Miami. I've been in the casino industry since 1992. And one of the things that I can tell you in my tenure in the casino industry is that it's a great industry to grow. It's a great career path for people to get better and understand how to serve people. One of the things that I've noticed in this particular respect to what's going on right now is that the lawmakers really need to understand whom they're affecting by making these decisions. It's not just the card room. It's the card room's employees, their families, and the community in general. Thank you very much. Claudia Tong. Thank you. My name is Claudia Tong, C-L-A-U-D-I-A-T-O-N-G. -I, I began as a third party proposition player at Bay 101, Pi Gao floor person, and now I'm the cage cashier at California Grand Casino. I'm here today to share the significant impacts on the possible restrictions of the California games. The rotations of the player dealer positions will not only affecting myself, but my family, friends, and coworkers, and all the communities that had the card rooms. Just my family alone, my sisters, brother-in-laws, husbands, and myself, seven members in my family all work in the card room industry for over 20 years. I'm 16 years away from retirement. My daughter will be in college next year. I need every penny that I make at work to survive. In California games, if the California games are being restricted by the Department of DOJ, my income will be impacted, possible layoff from work, losing my house, can't afford to rent, I will be end up on the street, and this is no joke. It's costly enough to stay alive in California. Please don't make it, don't make our life more difficult than it is now. I beg you, please take all of us and the community in account. Do not drastically make change, make any change or restrictions to harm the card rooms. The rotations of the player dealer positions will kill the game. And please don't let it, don't let the change happen. I love my jobs, my customer, and all my co-workers. Thank you. Edgar Cisneros. Yes, not. <laughs> Director Shimazu, Bureau members, good afternoon. Edgar Cisneros, uh, City of Commerce, City Administrator. 
As you consider the adoptions of regulations related to the rotation of the dealer player position, we ask that you consider the reasonable reliance that many parties have undertaken based on the state of California's review and approval of games currently played in California card clubs. Contract law recognizes property rights of parties must be protected when one party relies on the promises made by another party. Here I ask that the Bureau consider the hardships of all affected parties who would suffer, and you just heard some comments to that effect right now from Ms. Tong. If the Bureau adopts regulations that would significantly change the way the rotation of the dealer player position is currently administered, the relevant games that use a dealer player position were analyzed and approved by the state of California decades ago. Many different parties have reasonably relied upon the state's approval of these games and have made significant financial and personal commitments, again, as you just heard from previous speakers. For example, many of the card club operators have made significant financial investments related to the expansion of their facilities, including the development of new hotels, restaurants, and card room facilities. Card club operators have made significant financial commitments to the cities in which they operate, to nonprofit organizations, and the hardworking people they employ many of whom are here today. The cities have also made significant financial commitments related to the operation of the organizations. The residents of our communities, including seniors and children, would not have access to invaluable programs and services that improve their qualities of life without financial revenues that we receive from card clubs. Finally, and most important, please com consider the commitments that the card club's employees have made to improve their lives. Many families purchased homes and took on mortgages relying on this expectation, and I won't belabor that point. If the complicated, I'm sorry, if the contemplated regulations significantly impact card clubs' current operations and revenues, families will be at risk of losing much. I respectfully urge you to please avoid such a significant disruption to people's lives, which you would facilitate if you adopt regulations that alter the way the card clubs have lawfully operated for decades. And also, uh, you mentioned that you wanted to make the hearings accessible and convenient for folks, I would urge you to go a step further and make them a little more accessible and convenient to the folks that are actually impacted. And it was sort of a, an Easter egg hunt to get here as well this afternoon. So please consider that also. Thank you so much, Bureau. Bye. Mario Santos. All right, we'll come back to Mario. Um, uh, Christopher Hong. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Jason Giannini. I'm representing uh, Christopher Hong and Napa Valley Casino. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Jason Giannini, G-I-A-N-N-I-N-I. At Napa Valley Casino, we, we, we have always prided ourselves on remaining compliant. Whenever a customer comes in who is new to California card rooms, our procedure is to explain every aspect of the player-dealer system and to encourage them to take part on both sides as it is to their advantage. This system evens the playing field, and we are very happy to offer a safe, fair, and enjoyable gaming environment. <clears throat> as an industry, we feel as though any further regulations and or restrictions would cause tremendous hardships which would have significant financial ramifications at every level. Obviously, any card room employee currently making a living wage would be in serious jeopardy of no longer doing so. All local business in radius to a card room and its employee would also be negatively impacted. City, state, and federal tax revenues would be drastically reduced. Nationwide, we have a declining middle class. California has been and should remain at the forefront of responsible and precise regulation. Further hindrance of card rooms fair and safe playing would serve no purpose other than to drive customers to larger tribal or out-of-state casinos that are historically less regulated, more profitable, and less engaged in our local communities. Thank you. All right, Mario Santos. Did he come back? 
right. Um, Angela Hong. Ed Zurisky. Hi, uh, my name is Ed Zahersky. I worked for Artichoke Joe Casino for approximately 40 years. I supported three kids, a wife, and Artichokes has 400 employees which pay taxes and they work. And, and um, it's a good place to work, and if things change, then a lot of people will be out of work, and um, everybody will benefit if things stay the same. Thank you. Max Popper. Hi, my name is Max Popov. Um, I've been a dealer for five years. I work at a Park West 580 in Livermore. And I um, just want to you know, keep it short and sweet, but I uh, just want to say how this possibly would affect me and others similar to me. Um, my parents recently lost their job, and my source of income is the only way that they can survive. Um, I feel like these changes would actually influence me and potentially others like me who have people relying on them to live a normal life. So I would really hope you guys consider the, the, the potential effect you guys will have on so many lives just like mine. Thank you. My apologies in advance. Uh, Robert. Is it Cleaver or Cleaver? All right. So what is it? Uh, Cliber. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm third generation <laughs> San Franciscan. And um, it's K-L-E-I-B-E-R, and I work for Artichoke Joe's. And uh, I'm 71 years old. I've worked for them for 30 years. And I'll tell you, one of the uh, proudest moments I have is working for them because they do so much for the community. Like the San Bruno Fire, they were first ones up to help the people, and they uh, benefit the 4-H club. And so any change in the rotation, I mean, it's been the same since I've been there for, for since 85. So I would appreciate it if you kept it the same. All right. Joanne Del Rosario. Good afternoon. My name is Joanne Del Rosario, and I am the mayor of Colma. Our city is fortunate enough to call Lucky Chances Casino a neighbor, employer, and generous supporter to our community. Any reduction in revenue for lucky chances caused by changes to existing regulations or withdrawal of game approvals would have a real and direct negative impact on all the residents of my city. It would mean lost jobs for residents, the loss of revenues we need for vital city services and economic activity. In Colma, Lucky Chances is our city's largest employer. They provide good paying, reliable jobs to a large portion of our community. Our community depends on these jobs to live and they are a major reason why our community continues to thrive. Many of these jobs do not require a college degree or prior experience. They are accessible to everyone and give the opportunity for Colma residents 
from all walks of life to provide for their families and play a positive role in our community. Lucky Chances is a great corporate citizen and community partner and has donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to many local and regional nonprofit charities serving many communities and populations. In addition, our city greatly relies on the tax revenues from Lucky Chances. In fact, last year alone, tax revenue from Lucky Chances accounted for 4.12 million, or 13% of our city's budget. This helps to pay for our law enforcement, public works, and planning department to improve our city as well as parks and recreation services that include cultural events, our local literacy program, at-risk teen programs, and children's events. I ask that you take the welfare of the city of Colma and its residents into account when making decisions on the future of card room games, approvals, or changes in regulations. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for having us here today. My name is Roger Brown, and I've been in the gaming industry for 14 years. I currently work at the California Grand as a poker floor, but I've also worked in the position of blackjack floor and dealer. I've been there for nine years. I'm a husband, a father, and a homeowner. Working in the California Grand has allowed me a home to support my family and the flexibility to be an involved father, as well as an active member of my community. It scares me to think that the gaming rules might be changed that could affect my family and those that I work with. This job allows me to provide for my family while living in the community that I grew up in. I hope that any rule changes will take into consideration those of us who depend on this industry for our income. Thank you very much. Charles Cambrosi. My name is Charles Cambrosi. My last name is spelled C A M B R U Z Z I. I work for the Oaks Card Club. Thank you for having all of us here today. I just want to say uh, I started my gaming um, career in 1996. I've been employed by Tribal Gaming as well as Card Rooms, so I have experience in both. I moved up from the food chain from a bar back all the way to a shift supervisor, Casino San Pablo. I've been at the Oaks, and I trained in Asian games at Napa Valley Casino. I see a lot of faces of people in here I love and know well inside and out. We've all worked together for many years. To my knowledge, the dealer button rotation has not changed, and the current way they do it now makes the ultimate sense. You have a banker that can cover all bets at any time. You offer the dealer button every two hands so the customers can choose how they game, but it's great because having a banker offers them to pay lower bets and have chance to make bonuses and have fun in the casino without banking against each other and winning one per one. The casinos like Tribal Gaming and Las Vegas, they have huge revenues from slot machines, golf courses, beautiful hotels, restaurants, every amenity you could ever think of. All we have is table games. There's nothing wrong currently right now with the way it does it. The way we do the rotation, the way we operate the games now, provide the optimal experience for the customer. Everything is supervised, managed, regulated, taxed, and it actually provides more jobs having a banker there because the bankers, the bankers group, employ all those people. 
They get benefits, wages. So each table has more workers at each table, which provides the maximum amount of jobs to everyone. They have their slot machines. They have their huge casinos. We have our small rooms. We have our table games. And that's the only way we can make money. If you change that, it'll ruin everything. Megan Fitzenberg, or I'm sorry, Fitzhenry. Good afternoon, it's all right. It's actually Fitzhenry, F-I-T-Z-H-E-N-R-Y. And I'm a very nervous speaker, but I did want to share my story with you. Uh, about four years ago, when I got the call to interview as a janitor at Park West Casino 580, I was in a welfare office in Stockton. Um, now I am a cage cashier, and I'm able to fully support and be the sole earner <clears throat> for my family of three. The proposed changes to the rotation of the player-dealer position would without doubt negatively affect me and every other person in our Park West family who are simply trying to support their families as I am. Um, I hope you'll consider these families when you come to your conclusion. Thank you. Michael Biskintawi. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you guys. Uh, my name is Michael Biskintawi, and I've been employed at the Oaks Car Club for the past 18 years. I'm originally from Beirut, Lebanon, a country with limited resources and opportunities. My family and I immigrated here when I was a young teen, and we have been living here in the Bay Area ever since. Being in a new country and not knowing the language was very hard on us. There was a huge language barrier that made starting a business or applying for scholarships a big challenge. I remember making a conscious decision at a young age to aim for a community college because I knew that my family could not afford a traditional four-year college and I didn't want to put the more strain on the finances. Um, needless to say, it's hard to find a good job with a two-year degree. I changed uh, jobs frequently and struggled to find a career throughout my early 20s. When I turned 25, however, a friend of mine that worked at the Oaks Club asked me if I needed a job. I said yes, and I've worked there ever since. I'm now 43 years old. In the past 18 years at the Oaks Club, I've been a dealer, trainer, assistant supervisor, and currently I'm the dealer supervisor. The Oaks Car Club has given me a career that I love and need for my family to thrive. Thankfully, I am now able to put my son in a good school so that he doesn't have to struggle. I'm also able to afford a home to secure my family's future. I'm equally thankful, however, to be in a position to train others and help them also achieve their goals and dreams. I'm not the only success story from the Oaks Car Club. The Oaks has given hundreds of people a chance to improve their quality of life through good paying jobs and careers. I have witnessed janitors, waitresses, trip runners, and security guards become dealers and managers. A lot of real people with real stories depend on this industry to put food on their table. Please take this into consideration while making your decisions. Changes that harm, that harm card rooms will in turn affect me and my family along with the rest of the card room community. Thank you again for allowing me to share. Benna Chang. Good afternoon, my name is Benna Chang and I'm here on behalf of the city of San Jose. Uh, we are very concerned about any drastic changes to the rules around card rooms. Bay, or, Bay 101 and the Casino Matrix provide a significant source of both jobs and revenue for the city of San Jose. In San Jose, these revenues go to pay for basic community services like police, and fire, library, and our community centers. 
These card rooms are a critical part of our community, and we ask that you consider these impacts as you make any decisions. Thank you. John Pearson. John Pearson, P-E-A-R-S-O-N. Uh, thank you so much for having us today, and uh, thank you to the variety of speakers. Uh, one of the things I most love about working in the card room is that great variety that you see with your fellow employees and players, of course, too. I'm currently the casino manager at Livermore Casino. Uh, my wife and I have both worked in the car California card room. She's currently at Bay 101. And for eight years now, we started down in Players in Ventura, and we moved together from Las Vegas uh, and just absolutely love California. Uh, the stability that the current regulations provide is extremely important to us. We've had, we have four children together, including two from California while we've been here. And I would hate, if jobs become lost, I would hate to have to move out of this great state and uh, find another place, opportunity to, to, to find work. So thank you so much, thank you. Johnny Tran. Hi, my name is Johnny Tran. I worked for California Grant back in 1979. This job has helped my whole family. So I love this job so much. Please don't take it away from us. Before you make decision, can you please think about it? everyone in here, every single person in here with their family. Before you make the decision, please think about us. Thank you. Tan Lee. Thank you for providing the space for us to express ourselves. My name is Tan Lee, T-H-A-N-H-L-E. I've been in the casino industry for 13 plus years since I was 20. Uh, I've been at California Grand Casino for the past four and a half years. As a poker dealer, before I was a pie gal dealer, before that, I've been at four other casinos, including Casino Matrix as a floor supervisor for tiles. I originally, however, learned uh, the whole card room system through John Park's establishment when, at his first club in Rancho Cordova. Now, I'm not going to go over what losing this job would mean to me, but what it would mean if I, what it has done for me in the last 13 years. It has put me through college, taken me off disability, it has helped me put my whole family together in one place so they can take care of each other because I'm the only one who works, the only one who finished college. Now, my place and my position at California Grand is helping me maintain my business. I'm working so that I can cut the cost to the clients for my business in complementary health. I'm starting Massage Without Borders to help speak out and help with the global polio eradication initiative. Taking this job away would detrimentally impact that and what I'm trying to do to help myself and the world that I am living in. I appreciate the time and space you've created for us to share all of this, and I ask that you consider the impact that you are causing if the regulations, the regulations change. Thank you. Timothy Adante. Uh, hello, thank you, uh, Commission, for being here to hear us today and everybody here. Uh, we're, we represent just a very small fraction of the industry. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have been in this industry for just over 20 years. I've uh, experienced many parts of it. and. Um, you know, changes being made to this industry should be very, very carefully thought out because it does impact many, many people in many, many different ways. Uh, going to the uh, player and uh, dealer rotation, I've, I've been in the business long enough to see 
um, the games with and without proposition players. And there's no question about it that uh, the way that it's handled today and the way it's been handled for the last 20 years that I've been in is optimal by so many, uh, you know, to the highest degree. It, I'm not the greatest speaker, but uh, I do, I do see, uh, uh, I, I have seen a lot of changes in this business, but it, it seems to me that it, it's always progressed for the better. I mean, the, the business has grown uh, in, in many ways, and, and I think the decisions that you, uh, you know, make for the state of California and its uh, regulations in gaming is thought out uh, very well, and I and I think you're all genuine, and you and you do uh, respect uh, the opinions of everybody here today. So I just want to say thank you, and and uh, uh, thank you for for being here, everybody. And just remember, this is a very very minute fraction of the industry that we live in today. So thank you very much. Alex Ellison. Hello, um, my name is Alex Ellison, and I've been with the California Grand Casino for just short of nine years now. Um, you know, I stand before you now quite nervous. I'm not really one to be a public speaker. Um, in fact, the last time I did so was at a memorial service for a very close relative of mine who passed unexpectedly. And I just share that with you to really kind of just express, I guess, my grave concern for myself, my family, my friends and coworkers' families, and um, you know, not to mention all of the card rooms, I guess, across California. Um, I like to say, you know, we've been diligently and strictly following these rules for years, and I'm just pressed to ask, why um, are we looking to all of a sudden change it? Um, what's wrong with how things are done now? And you know, it's these questions that really kind of pique my curiosity as to who stands to benefit from these changes. Um, I can't imagine it's any of us standing in this room. And I'd like to, I guess, be corrected if I'm wrong, but it just seems like a kind of just, uh, you know, faceless, nameless, and ruthless kind of power move in the name of greed. And uh, I guess with that in mind, I'd like to just, I guess I'd, I feel very much obliged to stand here and at least provide one more face and one more name to be heard in an argument against these new regulations, which would clearly be detrimental to us as a community. Um, hopefully you have accomplished that, and thank you. Travis Pava. Travis Paiva, P-A-I-V like Victor, A. Um, single father of four, worked at the California Grand Casino in Pacheco, California for two and a half years. Some folks know how I ended up there. Um, before I was there, I actually was in charge of security and protection for a very large pharmaceutical company. And a buddy of mine said, hey, this uh, casino they asked me to start working, and they're trying to set up an internal security program, but I just don't know how to do it. Can you help? And I left a job that supplied protection for 4,000 employees, 25 buildings. That job supplied 40% of the revenue for the city of Emeryville. I come in, and I love this place. I love my job. I love the people. I love the customers. Those things will disappear if these regulations come into effect. The customers will not come in. They will not pay for something they don't want to play. They are not gonna play because of this if they're not gonna be able to walk away with that bonus after making that $5 bet. Not everyone's gonna be able to have a bankroll like they do in Vegas or whatever. I'm not a gambler, I don't know. But I know this, further government regulation only strangles industry. 
It prevents the growth of a community and industry. It will present a problem with unemployment. It will present a problem with your tax revenue. You will see a rise in people in need of public services like food stamps. You will see an exodus of people foreclosing on their homes and having to move to places like Vegas or Atlantic City, Tahoe, Reno. You will see crime go up. Who's paying for the police? Who's paying for the homeless community programs that are going belly up and bankrupt right now? It's the taxpayers. They pay that burden. I also hear comments, and I find it quite disgusting, when I hear that, well, Native Americans got a bad deal. This is their way of getting some of that money back. I'm a Western Cherokee. This is another tribe starving my tribe. My grandmother was born on a reservation in Oklahoma. We came to California for a better life, and this is going to ruin it for a single father of four and everybody else here. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The customers are happy. It's paying for public service. You have people buying homes. You have people employed instead of sucking dry the unemployment system and the extensions that are dwindling. Let's not increase the burden on California and the California taxpayers and the people that are here for the sake of some political correctness and a money grab. Thank you. Uh, Zhu Sheng. Okay, we'll come back. Hugh Liu. Zhang He. Uh, Huli Chang. Tilly Wu. Dennis King. Hello, my name is Dennis King, K I N G. Uh, I work at the California Grand Casino. I've been there for 30 years, 30 long and glorious years. And uh, our mission statement is at the California Grand, we are committed to providing the friendliest, safest, most action-packed fun in the Bay Area. And we, I think, deliver that and have delivered it for many, many years. When I started in 1988, 30 years ago, we were a pretty small club, and uh, Texas Hold'em became legalized, and that's how I got hired, which is a funny story, but I don't think I'll tell it right now. Anyway, uh, I spent time at uh, Indian casinos that were uh, almost working out of trailers. So everybody, uh, everybody profited in this business, they still are. And I think it's really, uh, you've heard all the economic arguments. I don't have any, I'm, I'm old, I'm almost retired, so I'm not worried about that. But I think it's basically a fundamental issue of fairness. The market is big, as, big, big enough for all of us. And I think that should be uh, the spirit of our uh, consideration as we go forward. Thank you. Uh, Sivan Merrick.
Good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, thank you for being here, for allowing us to express our comments and concerns. Um, my name is Sevan Merrick. I am 25 years old. Before I get into what I want to get into, the most important thing for me is to be a provider for my mother and my father, who are both currently ill and disabled. Um, what the California Grand has offered me is the flexibility to be working overnight and on the evening shifts and being able to take care of my family during the day and also making a living for my family. When's the last time you heard one job taking care of three people in California? It's been a while. I'm able to afford the basic essentials of life, shelter, food. I'm able to take care of my parents to go to the doctors, to the dentist, and anything else they may need. I want the Department of Justice to understand that this affects everyone if this goes through. It not only affects me, it affects our floor dealers, or I'm sorry, floor managers, our dealers, our chip runners, our cage, our food service and cocktail waiters and waitresses, the owners of each establishment, our ship supervisors, and our board. I said, we all know that the market is big for each and every one of us, both tribal and card room. We know that both tribal and card room casinos offer something unique to the gaming industry, whether it be a rotation of a bank or different games. It seems to me that this is not an issue of shortage of business, but wanting more. We all know that they both are able to provide a service for the public. In conclusion, what I want to say is that at the California Grand Casino, it is our most highest priority that we offer the rotation of the player dealer position in a fair and professional manner that has not been changed for quite some time. I also want to say that with the decisions that will be made from the Department of Justice, I want it known again that it's not a shortage of business we have plenty of business to share in this marketplace that each and every one of us can have a job and provide for our families. I want them to understand that it's not just me, it is everybody, including the community, including our police officers, includes everybody, every single person. I said, um, if, this, if this goes through, it's gonna, it's gonna affect everyone drastically. That's all I wanna say, thank you. Uh, twin, no. Anthony Patino. Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Anthony Patino. I've been in the industry for almost six years. Um, as a kid, I grew up homeless in California in a poor family and lacked the prospects or knowledge to make something of myself. In the industry, I started as a TPPS and eventually became a shift lead and now operations supervisor, or TPSU. Uh, my time in the industry and with Night Adventures allowed me to put myself in a position with a living wage that I may not have had otherwise and taught me the meaning of serving others. I believe I speak on behalf of my friends and family in the back here from Night Adventures. Everybody say hello. as well as others from various card rooms I have worked at, when I say it would be a shame if the changes proposed took those opportunities away. Thank you. Corbin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Corbin Kosiemba. I'm a supervisor with Night Adventures. Um, I've worked in the industry for over six years. Um, I'm grateful for having found this industry because, you know, I don't feel like I'll be able to provide, you know, for my family a living wage within the Bay Area without, you know, working for this company. Um, without the help and encouragement of my coworkers and my teammates back here, uh, I don't feel like I'll be in the position I am today as a supervisor. Um, 
along with all the ways my company has been able to give back. I find great self-fulfillment uh, with this company because we give back to our communities um, up and down California. So uh, thank you all for your time for hearing us out. I appreciate you. Robert Macare. Hello, everybody. I wanted to thank you all for being here. It's very important to me, Robert Macareg, M-A-C-A-R-A-E-G, that all of you know that this job is extremely important to me. I am only 22 years old, probably one of the youngest in the industry now, but worth it. Um, when it comes down to it, the California Grand has been treating me so well to where I don't have to have my mother or my sister worry about rent anymore. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about my school debt. I also am able to keep continuing my schooling to better myself as I go along. Frank Myers mentioned that he, that this is a career where there is so much opportunity for growth, and I agree with it completely. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to all the people who taught me and taught me the craft of being able to serve cards to the players and the community. I also wanted to thank all of the management and all of the leaders that just had their voice speaking. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Isaac Trumbo. Good afternoon. Thanks for having us. Thank you for taking some time to hear from the people who are gonna be most affected by these changes that you're considering. Uh, I've been in this industry for 12 years. I, my dad was a preacher, my mom was a house cleaner. I don't have a college degree. Um, took me a long time to get my sea legs in life and I found a home in this industry uh, where I didn't find a home elsewhere. I'm a capable person but uh, had a circuitous path. And uh, I found a career, I found a future, I'm able to support my family, my mom, uh, who doesn't really have any options now that she's a widow. And I think that if you made these changes, it would drastic, drastically affect my family. Uh, but I think I would be okay. I'd probably find a, a way to make it work. I'm a capable person, like I said. But there are so many people who work for Night Adventures, my employer, who don't have the same kind of options and the same capabilities. We employ many, many dozens, uh, hundreds of ESL people. Uh, these are our friends and coworkers. Uh, people who have disabilities. Uh, people who are refugees from the Khmer Rouge who don't read and write in any language. Uh, that's a fact, I'm not making that up. Um, these are some of our best employees and our longest employees, people that I consider friends. And these decisions that you're making are certainly going to affect their lives if you change the rotation. Um, and I would hope that you would consider that when making these decisions. It's, it's a big deal. I don't know, is there any other industry in California that provides living wage jobs out the gate to entry level employees with no background and no history like me? For example, where you can support a family, 401k plan, medical benefits. Um, these, tell me where uh, these, these women who fled the Khmer Rouge are gonna find a home after this job goes away. Um, that's what's at stake when you're making these decisions. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to listen and to hear uh, our stories so that you can make these with a high degree of consideration because it really is a critical issue for California. Thanks so much. Megan Burnett. Like many others have said, thank you very much for giving us the time, your time, to speak on our behalf. And thank you guys, all of you, for showing up and standing up for I'm newer to the card room industry and the gaming industry. I actually worked for a while in private equity for venture capital firms 
in Silicon Valley. And while they do help the economy go round, I knew it wasn't for me. And I joined Knighted, and I'm going nowhere. Not like nowhere with my job, but I mean, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm staying with Knighted. And here's why. It's so interesting because this industry is, unfortunately, like always stigma stigmatized as very taboo. I've never, ever met more genuine people in my whole life, ever, which is why I want to stay. One thing that we've had a chance to build most recently is something called Knighted Neighbors. I'm sure you've seen multiple shirts here today. Um, we get to help give back to the communities that our employees live and work in. We've had the chance to partner with Habitat for Humanity. We've partnered with multiple food banks and other nonprofits that are trying to make a difference for the people of California. It is really tough right now to live in California and live. Um, the cost of housing is quite high. A lot of people aren't able to stay. But we also want to be able to give back. So we kindly request today, please consider keeping card rooms around so we can help continue our communities thriving and getting stronger. Thank you. Jennifer Shaw. Hi, I'm Jennifer Shaw. I work for PT Gaming, but I'm here representing the autism community. Um, two years ago, my daughter was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, and I have met multiple dealers while working in cards rooms, multiple associates for PT Gaming who also have autism spectrum disorder. It's a very unique industry because it's hard to get jobs with autism. It truly is. And so for a mother of a special needs child where if you know anything about special needs, it's three times as expensive to raise a special needs child than it is to raise a neurotypical child. So to see dealers, to see associates, to see people within that autism community be able to support themselves and thrive not only gives me hope, but it's an industry that allows me to support my family. I don't know what would happen if I wasn't within this industry itself. And honestly, there's a lot of us out there who are in the autism community who would be taking advantage of government assistance programs without this industry. So it would actually be more costly for the state and for the federal government to not have this industry exist. So I please ask you to think about those and think about what you'd actually like your tax services to go to before you make any sort of changes. All right, that concludes the uh, list of folks who signed up to present comments. Is there anybody who did not have an opportunity to sign up who would like to present comments today? Good morning, Dr. Smatsu. My name is Rudy Bermudez. I am the executive director of the California Cities for Self-Reliance, a California JPA that has been given authorization under the California Go Government Code. We represent over seven cities in Los Angeles County, but more importantly, we're designed to look at the fiscal impacts and protect our revenue sources for our communities. We represent over half a million residents in these seven cities. Your proposed changes to the withdrawal of previously approved games such as Black, California Blackjack 22 and other games, Cal Games, and your proposed changes to, to rotation will have a dramatic effect on our communities. And you've already heard from a councilwoman from the city of Coma on the effect in their community. You need to realize that your proposed changes 
aren't just changing how games are played in our card rooms, our licensed card rooms. It's changing the lives of hundreds of thousands of residents in California who depend on their cities to provide the vital services. Just alone, you've heard from the city administrator from today from the city of, of Commerce. 60, just cutting blackjack from, from the Commerce Club would eliminate 65% of the revenue that's generated to the city of Commerce. In Hawaiian Gardens, you are talking about unincorporating an entire city, no longer able to provide public safety services or any other type of services in that city. So I'm asking you to have this into consideration as you make these changes, because you're just not changing a card room and how games are played. You're going to impact hundreds of thousands of lives of residents throughout California and not just in the cities in which I represent in the JPA. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And <laughs> I'd like you to also reconsider uh, the San Marcos uh, venue and have a venue that is more accessible this was a nightmare to get to, uh, flying in from Sacramento. So thank you very much. Any other speakers? All right, it is approximately uh, 2.41. The Bureau greatly appreciates the time you committed to today's discussion. We will analyze all information discussed today and we'll move forward with the process when appropriate. This concludes the workshop discussion concerning the rotation of the player dealer position. Thank you for attending and for your comments. Uh, you may still submit uh, comments or pose questions in writing, you can direct your comments to the Department of Justice, Bureau of Gambling Control, at P.O. Box 168024 in Sacramento, California, 95816, Attention Regulations. And then the next workshop is scheduled for Monday, January the 14th, 2019, at 9 a.m. at the California State University, San Marcos. Thank you.